Morning. I've uh, just sort of made a bit of a wash. I'm going to, instead of wetting the paper first, I'm going to wet it all over with raw sienna. So I'm going to do a woodland scene this morning. I was asked whether I did um, townscapes, cityscapes, and I don't. I do landscapes. I, I've had no formal art training. I just had a desire to learn to paint trees and skies many, many years ago. Yeah. Nice warm tint. Now we can go with some colour. So, uh, lemon yellow, well, cadmium yellow, uh, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, burnt sienna. I don't use them all. In fact, I'm using a bit of red now mixed with a burnt umber to see if I can sort of approximate make the uh, burnt sienna. I just put my thumb in, in the raw sienna. It's uh, these are Cotman watercolors, tubes of 120 mils. Uh, yeah, they're, they're they're very very good uh, cheap paints. So they're they're Cotman Cotman watercolors. Uh, you don't want to buy the, the 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 tiny tubes. They won't won't last very long at all. But these these are good. I'm sure they're pretty permanent. And this is Fabriano 130 pound weight. As it, as it stretches, as it will, we clip it. There comes a time when the, the, the painting on the wet surface is critical. It's when it's in a half dry, half wet state that it's a bit uh, tricky. You can get those uh, cauliflowers. So let's mix a bit of, bit of yellow. Bit of a little in there, I think. So we'll just put a bit of a, a, a background in. And I'm going to use that uh, light red with a bit of I might put a bit of water in there. Oh, we'll have a bit of that uh, autumn colours. Not paying too much attention to what we're doing at the moment because this this is just the sort of underpainting. Um, so we'll, we'll have a little bit of a rocky stream coming. Down there, so let's get some dark, some burnt sienna, burnt umber, I mean, and ultramarine, some really good, good darks. We'll have a few rocks in there, in here. Remember, what you put on will dry a lot lighter. Shadow in there. So you've got to allow for that. Don't worry if you think it's far too dark, it probably won't be. If you think it's just about right, you'll find it won't be as well. So let's just get some, some nice... Now that's drying quite nicely up the top there, we can just put a bit of autumn leaves. Uh, maybe a bit of a bit of green over the side. You don't want everything to be the same. You don't want symmetry because that can get a bit bit monotonous. So this is this is a dry brush. Now a bit of shadow. Got a nice good thick rich. Ultramarine and light uh, and light red. We we'll do a bit of bit of etching. Now I want some rocky stuff over there. Now we're going to start etching out some some rocks and and some.
just some extra slightly distant trees in the wood. Okay, now we clip. I think it's the first one I've done in nearly 1400 demos where I've actually tinted the paper first. I've usually just wet it with some clean water and then added the colour after. Uh, now I know I forgot to put the sky, a bit of sky in there, but we can do that in a minute. I'll re wet that maybe. Uh, right, let's uh, just. Well, so we're, we're showing the wood in, in distance here. Right, card, plastic card. So let's uh, not do too, too, too much, but we'll. Just a, f a few little bits and pieces, and we can put some in here. The only danger with using a card is that you will overdo it, and I do that all the time. Add a bit of. That's not going to take any dry brush there, so let's uh, just. Right, let's put a, bit, a few bushes in there now. Bit of green, bit of thick ultramarine, bit of red. I've not touched the uh, the Payne's grey. Try to leave leave that out. Okay. Look, with, with that with the hake, you can do all sorts of nice things with it. It's got to be a bit wet though. Otherwise, your, your the bristles will uh, separate. So how to, to give the impression of there being lots of twigs on this tree, well, a bit of shadow in there as well, a bit of blue. Very gentle, I'm just using the this bit of the brush, ideal. Right, now we'll uh, just put in some bigger Some he heavier trees going, or trunks going out up into here. You can do so much with this uh, hake. The Ron it's a Ron Ranson hake, that's what we call it. Sadly, Ron passed away for Christmas. Uh, but he left a legacy of watercolour painters. I'm one of them, Stephen Cronin. The thing is, it enables you to, if you persevere, to do a, an impressionist watercolour with, with basic tools. That, that, that's really working well now. But the, the brush itself takes a lot of getting used to, I have to say. So you, you won't learn to use it overnight. But it, it will repay a thousand times your seven or eight pounds invested in this lovely brush. They last for ages and they don't cost very much. Let's put a, let's anchor that with a bit of, bit of shadowy. Just 
to add some detail to the distance. Right, okay. There we are. So, let's, uh, I don't know if I want to muck about with that sky, really. It's uh, painting an, ex an, imp an impressionist woody scene in watercolour. There's no more than that, we're putting these extra ones here. I'm not going to use any rigger work, I think, on, on the, the, the uh, on these trees. The, the rigger, the hake, just says it all, really. Blue and brown make a really good, rich, warm, dark. Just some little bits of twiggy stuff. Just I've neglected that side a little bit. Right, I'm going to put a bit of bit of water. I might put a couple of figures in. It's good to practice figures. I've got a sheet of paper here that occasionally doodle. The Frank Clark will say carrots. Um, I'm not a figure painter, but I think it's uh, all good fun. So let's just well, it's a bit, a bit of that colour there. Okay, that, that's it. I'll just put the shadow or the reflection in, in that dark bit of blue. Let's see if, if I can ruin it, make it a bit heavier. Just let that fly. Let's see if we can get some of that sort of okay, that's it. Right, I just want to strengthen up a little bit of that there on the on here because it's just a little bit insipid. So no, uh, no, no rigor. Very delicate. And we can just put a little bit of a dry brush on that. Okay. Now we'll have a think about where to put some figures. Uh, put, some, put a couple there so we're a bit bluey. So, let's uh, Well, that'll do. That's done. Hopefully, dry, dry lighter. Just a silhouette. Just put a slightly bluer one in. Oh, 
the one further down. Well, that'll do. I'll put a stick in the chair now. That, that, that will dry lighter, it's just a little bit bit insipid at the moment. Let's just put a little signature in. Okay, that, that'll do, that'll do. We'll put it in a mount. Oh, I don't know, wait, Alan Owen up. We speak a lot on the phone, Alan, and I know many of you uh, latch onto his channel. Very fine teacher, but he went to art school. He was one of the lucky ones. We, most of us, took it up. <coughs> we were in our, when we were in our twenties. I'm not sure that's the right amount for it, but if I just put it to there, and bring the camera around, and then we'll. Well, there we are. It's a quite bright autumn day. <coughs> See me. Uh, only, the only rigor work here are the two little figures. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>